very important to understand that when you, your fat cells, when you start to lose fat through diet and exercise and your fat cells start to shrink in size, you'll notice that person has a direct impact on their overall metabolic health. And so they start to see improvements in other health markers, things like fasting plasma glucose, things like blood pressure, uh, resting heart rate. So all of these markers improve along with it versus going for liposuction and surgically removing large amounts of fat, leaving that person in the metabolic state that got them there in the first place. And so there's a high probability of them actually returning to their original size. But that's why it's so important to take the route of losing weight through diet and exercise so that we can actually restore the health of the individual. It is so good to be here with you today and to be able to share some of my ideas with you. So today we're going to be talking about fat loss, really expanding on this topic. It's a huge topic. Um, there's so much conflicting information out there that makes it really confusing and difficult to understand. So my goal today is really to break down this topic in a way that you can better understand it and also to give you some information that you can maybe use to reach your desired goals. So, we're gonna start off with what body fat is, moving on to fat loss itself and the physiology behind it. Then I'm gonna to explain to you the differences between weight loss and fat loss. Yes, there is a difference. And show you a little bit why muscle mass is important and the relationship it has when coming to fat loss. Um, the four conditions that I believe are necessary for lifelong fat balance, the four markers of your fat loss status, and then I'm going to show you how you can actually go and measure that um, through a DEXA scan. And then finally, I'd like to introduce you to some of the clients that I've worked with and just their unique stories and, uh, during their fat loss journeys. So, let's get going. Okay, so what is body fat? Body fat is a protective, insulating, connective tissue that we find in between our organs and underneath the skin. The body uses fat as a fuel source, and fat is the major storage form of energy in the body. So we use this, this fat as energy. You can see there you've got white fat and brown fat. The white fat is where we store the energy, and brown fat is where we actually use that energy to create heat in the body, to raise the body temperature, or, or to actually regulate body temperature. So you can see that are, there are many, um, there are many fat, there are many um, important functions of fat in the body, and a moderate amount of fat is definitely necessary for good health. Okay, so fat is not all evil. We definitely need some to be in a good health. Finally, um, I'm going to move on to what is fat loss. So fat loss is really just the desirable reduction in the excess levels of fat mass. So what happens when a person starts to lose weight through diet and exercise, their fat cells actually start to shrink in size. And they never really disappear completely. So they just get smaller and smaller over time. And the only way to really, if you wanted to reduce or get rid of fat cells, would be through liposuction. Now, it's very important to understand that when you, your fat cells, when you start to lose fat through diet and exercise, and your fat cells start to shrink in size, um, you'll notice that person has a direct impact on their overall metabolic health. And so they start to see improvements in other health markers, things like fasting plasma glucose, things like blood pressure, uh, resting heart rate. So all of these markers improve along with it versus going for liposuction and surgically removing large amounts of fat, leaving that person in the metabolic state that got them there in the first place. And so there's a high probability of them actually returning to their original size, um, which is so unfortunate. But that's why it's so important to take the route of losing weight through diet and exercise so that we can actually restore the health of the individual. That makes sense. Okay, so how does fat loss work? Right, I'm not gonna go too technical, but I'm just going to give you a broad overview so we can actually understand how this works. The first diagram, you can see this big, juicy, yellow fat cell full of free fatty acids. This first diagram is demonstrating something called um, fat, negative fat flux. So all that means is that more fat is leaving the cell than what's entering in. You can see there are two inputs, 
the red arrow and the blue arrow, and then one output that would be through the green arrow. And so all what, we, what we're trying to achieve through fat loss is to make sure that more fat is leaving that fat cell than what's entering in. Right, so now we have liberated the free fatty acid and it has left that big yellow juicy fat cell and it's made its way into the bloodstream. Off it goes to, to the muscle tissue to get burned or to be used, converted into energy. That process is called beta oxidation. Now I want you to remember that word because we're going to talk about it a bit later. So through beta oxidation, you're actually going to burn up that free fatty acid and it gets used as energy. One thing to note is that if there's not a demand for more energy in that muscle tissue, is that free fatty acid can actually make its way back through the bloodstream, back to the fat cell, and it gets re-esterified, it gets repackaged and sent back to the fat cell for storage for later use. So very important to note that even though the free fatty acid has been liberated and it's in the bloodstream, you need to place a demand for more energy. So you, you need to use that muscle tissue so that we can burn the free fatty acid through beta oxidation. Now, as the cycle continues and we have the fats, free fatty acid liberated and it is burnt in the muscle tissue and the cycle continues over and over again, eventually the fat cell starts to shrink in size and the individual actually starts to get smaller and smaller. So it is a process and it takes time, but this is how it works. So, I don't know if you guys know, but there are two types of fat loss. It's important to understand this. The first type of fat loss, I would say, is called weight loss, and this is widely used by most people. So, someone decides that they want to uh, lose weight, and they start to reduce their calories, and they start to eat less and less and less, and they do really lose weight. The problem comes in when 40% of that weight loss is coming from lean mass the remaining 60% is coming from fat tissue. Now you would say that's maybe not a problem, the person looks great, they feel great in the moment. Um, but it is definitely not a long-term thing. The other way of losing fat is what I call fat loss, and this is really the same person deciding to lose fat and reducing the calories, but they're smart and they decide to actually control for protein, so make sure they're getting their daily protein intake, and secondly, they start to take up some form of resistance training exercise. Now, just with those two things, they also lose weight, but 95% of that fat, weight loss is coming from their fat tissue, the remaining 5% from lean mass. So that is the goal. That is really the goal. I'm not going to lie to you. The first way of losing weight is much faster. It's much quicker. That's why we all do it. We just cut calories and we start to get smaller. But over time, as you lose this muscle tissue, which is so expensive, this, this muscle tissue is like gold, you want to hold on to it, especially as the older you get. Um, so over time, that is going to start to disrupt, disrupt your metabolism and start to really cause problems later on. So in the moment, it's great, but really later on, that's when you start to pick up problems. You really want to hold on to the muscle tissue that you have, and if you need to lose weight, you want to make sure that you're only losing body fat and not your lean tissue. So fat loss and muscle mass. So why is it important to hold on to this muscle tissue? Some people are now calling muscle mass the longevity organ. So why is it so important? Why is there this big thing about muscle mass? Number one, it is the largest site for beta oxidation. Now remember we spoke about beta oxidation. This is where the free fatty acid get used up and converted into energy. So the muscle needs energy and it uses free fatty acids. So imagine the more muscle tissue you have, the larger the capacity to burn fat. So that's number one. Secondly, largest site for glucose disposal. All this means is that um, you have more storage space for the glucose coming in the bloodstream. So when you eat a high carbohydrate meal and there's a lot of glucose in the bloodstream, there is storage space for this glucose. So in other words, it can go into the muscle tissue and be stored and used at a later time. Um, these individuals can actually get away with eating more. And not just eating more, they can actually eat more carbohydrates. So if you have a friend that can just eat all the pizza at the parties that has been going on and doesn't change their body shape, this is probably why they have very active muscle tissue that that can store all this glucose that is coming in. And it's not really affecting their overall health. 
Thirdly, increase in metabolic rate. Muscle tissue is the most expensive tissue we have, and why is that? Because it, it takes a lot of energy to maintain it. Muscle tissue is constantly breaking down and building up, all the time, breaking down and building up. So it requires quite a lot of energy to maintain this. So therefore, your basal metabolic rate, which just means the rate, it just means the amount of energy you need to function daily, is going to go up. Okay, so that's the number three. The fourth thing is your body shape. Muscle determines your body shape. And I'm gonna show you an image now that is quite shocking, if you haven't seen this before. Here we've got two females. They are exactly the same height and exactly the same weight. So I'm gonna say that again. We've got two females, exactly the same height and exactly the same weight. They look completely different. Why is that? The woman on the right, she has three kilos more muscle mass than the woman on the left. That's about 6.6 .6 pounds. And she has about three kilos less fat than the woman on the left. She looks completely different. I love this image because most of the women I know, myself included, um, are scared of building muscle, are scared of getting bulky. I don't want to look bulky, I don't want to look big. So we are afraid of weights, we are afraid of training and getting big muscles. But really my goal here and with my clients, we're talking about a healthy level of muscle mass. We're not talking about getting fit or getting big or getting buff. I'm really talking about healthy levels of muscle mass. And you can clearly see in this image that this female looks much smaller than the woman on the left, even though she is carrying more muscle mass. Okay, so what are the four conditions um, that I believe are necessary for lifelong fat balance? So these four things, I believe that if you continue to do that, you will have healthy levels of fat balance. So number one is calorie deficit. And don't be alarmed, don't get a fright. I'm not gonna tell you to only eat lettuce and live on lettuce every day. This can be fun, I mean, I love food. My father is Eastern European and I grew up with frozen pigs in the freezer and it was always about food and celebrating and enjoying food with people. So I'm really not afraid of food, and I don't think we need to be. There are smart ways of creating deficits. So you can use fasting as a tool. You can also use something like uh, increasing daily activity or vigorous exercise. You can also reduce calories, and there's smart ways of doing it. You really don't have to starve yourself, and it doesn't have to be painful. It can actually be enjoyable. If you're smart and you know what you're doing and you work it out, you can easily make life fun and enjoyable and still be in that deficit. You only need a 500 calorie deficit per day to lose two kilograms of fat and fat, not lean mass. Two kilograms of fat per month. So 500 calorie deficit per day to lose two kilograms of fat per month. It's slow and it's steady. It's not the weight loss version, it's the fat loss version. So it's slow and steady, but what I love about it is you, are, you know that you are losing fat and not any other tissues that your body desperately needs and needs to hold on to. Number two, protein control. So we saw previously that the individual that controlled for protein, it's, it's a basically a signal that you're sending to your body. You're telling your body to hold on to the muscle mass, hold on to the tissue. You're giving it the nutrients, you're giving it the tools that it has to build the muscle up and break it down and rebuild and break it down. So you need to have enough protein. And did you know that we don't store protein in the body? We store carbohydrates and we store fat, but we do not store protein. So yes, you do need to eat this daily. And a smart way to do it is actually to find your protein. So it's two grams of protein per kilogram of fat-free mass. Fat-free mass just means anything that is not fat. And you can get that number on a DEXA scan, but if you don't have access to that, there's another calculation you can use. It's 1.6 grams of protein uh, per kilogram of body weight. So controlling for protein, once you find your number, divide that up throughout the day, and try and eat the same amount of protein every meal. Why do I say that? Because it helps to keep you satiated. It's going to minimize the snacking. It's going to make you feel full and allow you to not think of food until the next meal. So very important, and especially as we get older, protein becomes more and more important. It's funny because as people get older, they actually eat less protein, and it's 
completely the opposite. You really need to make sure that you're getting enough protein because it doesn't only support your muscle tissue, but bone, hair, and skin, and so many other things. So next is exercise. Um, so some form of resistance exercise training. I use 10X with my clients. Why? Because I have to. I'm dating the 10X guy. <laughs> no, not, no, I'm joking. Um, it, it works, so I get really good results with my clients. And the main reason that I think 10X works, you know, I've trained so many people now, and you know, there's so many beautiful resistance training programs out there, and I'm not saying that 10X is better than any of them, but what I love about it is the duration. So it's 15 minutes once or twice a week. Not one of my clients can give me a good enough excuse of why they cannot do that. So it is, keeps them consistent. That's basically why I think 10X works so well, because nobody can make an excuse to tell me, to tell your coach, you can't make 15 minutes a week, why not? You, is your health not that important to you? So 15 minutes, yes, it's a grueling, intense workout. If some of you have experienced it, you might know the feeling, but it is definitely worth it. I see it as something as important as brushing your teeth. We brush our teeth for dental health, but 10X for me is for muscle health. It's something, it's a non-negotiable, it's something that you need to do once a week just to maintain a good amount of muscle mass. And especially as we get older, and for females, it's really, really important that we do this. Finally, walking, 10,000 steps a day, what a simple activity. Um, this one actually changed my life, mostly more than any of the others, because it's that daily activity, it's that daily movement that really can impact and contribute to your weight loss journey. We are so sedentary. I mean, we're all sitting here at this conference today. We sit in our cars, we sit at our offices, we sit at home. And so increasing daily activity through something like walking can really, really help your weight loss journey. And it's not just the walking and the activity. I found that I've started to do really fun things. Um, so I used to meet a friend of mine for coffee and we would sit at a coffee shop, shop for two hours, drinking coffee and really talking a lot of shit. <laughs> And now I said to her, no, that's not happening anymore. So we meet on a corner somewhere and we have to walk to the coffee shop. It takes us an hour. That gives you about 6,000 6, steps. So 60 minutes, every 10 minutes is about 1,000 steps. So we actually have to walk to the coffee shop to get our coffee. And sometimes we even walk back. But here we're still connecting, we're talking, and we're moving at the same time, getting our steps in. There's many other ways that you can incorporate this. Um, you can, I love actually taking a 20 minute walk after I've eaten. So you grab the dogs, you grab the kids, and you literally just take a 20 minute walk around the neighborhood after dinner or after lunch, and that just gets the family to connect, gets that movement going after lunch so we don't feel so heavy and lazy and tired. Um, so there's actually many ways of bringing that in. So if you did three 20 minute walks a day, that's gonna give you 6,000 steps. And the other 4,000 you can make up just through the movement, you know, walking to and from the bedroom and to the kitchen and in work and the office and that kind of thing. Okay, so it's pretty simple. It's actually the easiest one to do, but it can contribute in a massive way to your calorie deficit. So walking about 10,000 steps a day. All right, so the four markers of fat loss status. So these, I would say, are the four things that you want to track and you want to be on top of um, from today onwards. And it's pretty easy to get, I mean, most of these scores you can get from your DEXA scan. I'm gonna to explain to you exactly how that works. So number one would be your VAT. This is your visceral adipose tissue. This is the fat that you find in between the organs. This is likely the culprit for most of our um, health issues. So you really want to find out what your VAT marker is or find out what your status is. For females, you want to be anything between 100 grams and 500 grams. For males, 500 grams to one kilo. And you can get this on a DEXA scan, which I'll show you in a minute. So staying on the fat side, the second one would be an, your body fat percentage. So this is gonna contribute more to the way you actually look. That is really directly tied to your health because it does impact your health. Body fat, so the, the fat underneath the skin is really gonna impact more about the way you look. So 
Um, for males, you want to be anything between 14 and 21 percent. Females is 21 and 28 percent. These are for healthy ranges. All the ranges I'm giving you today is for health, not for fitness. So these are your healthy ranges. And don't get too stuck on them. Um, you know, I'll give an example of a female in her 40s that maybe comes to see me, and she's 35 percent body fat. Now, if you just looked at that, you would maybe say to her, you need to lose fat. But then we look at her VAT score, and she's got 200 grams of VAT internal, in between the organs. So she's in a super healthy state. I would not force this woman to lose weight or to lose fat. I would say to her, you're in a healthy state. How do you feel? How do you function? No, we're not looking at, at muscle right now. <clears throat> this is really just your fat status. So what are your energy levels like? Do you feel good in your own skin? And only if she really had an issue with the way she looked, then we could look at her body fat percentage. But so just use this range as a guideline and don't be too fixed on it. Like, let come to me like, I'm 29%, I'm, I'm not healthy. No, that's definitely not the case. But the biggest one you're looking here at is your VAT and make sure that you know that number. Now we're going to look at muscle tissue and actually your strength. So first we'll move to your muscle mass. That's an ALMI score. So appendicular lean mass index that you get on your DEXA scan as well. And this, this score is really just telling you how much muscle you have, muscle tissue you have in your body. So in the arms and the legs relative to your height. For males, you want to be between seven and nine, and females, five and a half to seven. Um, then we're going to move on to strength. This, we, we get the score, it's called your 6x alpha power score, and we get it when, we do, when you do your 10x workout. So if you've been with a coach or if you've done it before, you may have your score already. And you'll notice that the ranges are exactly the same as the muscle mass tissue. So what does that mean? What does that show us? Basically, what it's saying is that, let's say you have a female with a score of... Her muscle mass score is seven. She's at the upper end of a healthy range, but her power score is four. So that's showing me that the muscle tissue she has is not functioning well, because you would want her muscle score to match her fitness score or her power score. So the power score is really just showing us how much power can she produce in a certain, a certain amount of time relative to her body weight. So we find out that score, and then we look at her muscle tissue, and we see if it matches. You want that one-to-one -one ratio where it's matching. That's just showing me that the quality of your muscle is great. And if we see that, sometimes you don't really have to pick up more muscle mass. All we're focusing on here, really, is taking that female to a score of seven. So we're improving the quality of her muscle. What does that even mean? It means that we're waking up the muscle fibers that are dormant, that are sleeping. So we're making sure that the muscle tissue you have is functioning well. Because it's really important for us to also feel like we're functioning well, never mind looking good. You also want to have energy, you want to feel good, you want to be able to move around and do things. There's been a lot of parties and fun things going on here at Mind Valley, and it's important for you to be able to attend all of these things and to do all of that. So we look at function as well as muscle mass. It's not just about getting big, it's also about what you're able to do with that muscle tissue. Okay, so how are you going to measure your, how are you going to find out your numbers? So the most important thing is to find a DEXA facility near you. They are pretty much all over the world. Uh, that's not expensive. A DEXA scan is a full body x-ray of your entire body. And it's going to give you a beautiful report like this one over here. And it's going to show you, you can clearly see and differentiate the differences between your muscle tissue, your bone mass, and your fat mass. And don't be scared, don't be afraid to do this, because you don't know what to do if you don't know, you know where you are. So go and find out what your numbers are, because then you can also decide, you can see what are we going to focus on. If a client comes to me and we get all their, their, their numbers, and I see that maybe they, you know, it's going to tell me, do I focus on this client's strength, or are we going to look more at diet and focus on body fat or visceral fat? So these numbers are important because it's going to be what determines your fat loss journey, or it's going to determine your plan moving forward and how you want to approach things. So it's very, very important to have those numbers. Find yourself a DEXA scan. Um, you'll see here, this is what the scan looks like. It can be pretty scary, but it's important to have this information. And once you've done it, you've got it. And you can actually go and do something about it and then come back 
and test again and see if there's been improvement. Because a lot of times you see someone has lost weight, we don't really know what's going on inside. Have they lost body fat? Have they lost mean ma lean mass? So super important to know this. Okay, so we're gonna move on to my clients. I'm gonna start off with my first client. I'm gonna show you her DEXA scan over six months and show you the improvements. And you'll be shocked if when you find out what we actually did with her and how we got her to that point. So her name is Mary. She's with the US military. I worked with her in January uh, 2020. We started her journey. And I actually worked with her for a full year, but we've just given you a six month picture here. So you can clearly see the fat loss over the six months. We were lucky enough, Mary did a scan once a week, so we just scaled it down to six months. And you can clearly see how she loses fat over those six months. So starting in January 2020, and we ended in June 2020. Um, I'm going to show you a picture of her. So that is Mary in the beginning, and then you can clearly see how beautiful and strong she looks after the six months. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but notice how she was, when Mary came to me, she was eating about 450 calories a day. She was afraid of food, she was living off watermelon and eating 35 grams of protein. And she was in the US military doing a lot of running, a lot of cardio, and a lot of crazy um, military workouts. And she was doing about 9,000 steps a day, so her activity was quite high. So what did we do with Mary? It took me a while. <laughs> I had to go very slow. She was afraid of food. So we eventually got her to 1,100 calories per day. So we increased her intake. So she started eating more. And we increased her protein to 110 grams. And look at the results. All we did was 10x twice a week. So 15 minutes twice a week. That was the only resistance exercise we introduced. It's a funny story. She actually broke her toe in January. So when we started the 10x workout, she couldn't do the leg press. Um, and she couldn't run, which was excellent, because I told her, running is not good for you right now. So she actually stopped running, and this, is, this was the improvement after six months. So everything she'd been trying to do, I agree, I agree. Excellent result, she did the work, but funny that she actually ate more and she lost the weight, so very interesting. Next client, this is Nadia, this is only a two month, um, Two month difference, she was, came to me, she had a six month old baby, so very busy mom trying to run three businesses with her six month old baby, didn't have a lot of time. Same problem here, she wasn't afraid of food, she just didn't have time to eat. So she had about 800 calories per day, which we increased to 1,300. 44 grams of protein, we increased to 90 grams, so doubling the protein. She did a little bit of yoga, not too much, um, and her steps weren't too bad, but we brought in the 10X. And the one thing I want to point out with her is she only lost 1% of body fat. This is only a two-month period now. But her strength went from 2.7 to 5.4. So if you can remember, the cutoff point for females is 5.5 to be healthy for your strength. So in two months, we restored her strength. In two months, we got her to a healthy level of strength. That's massive after having a baby. That's super, super massive. So 10X really works, guys. And it's, again, it's not because it's the most brilliant program. It is, maybe, but um, it's, the, it's the consistency. It's just getting the work done and being able to show up for it. And it's because of the duration. It's a 15-minute workout. It's easy to do. So that was Nadia. Finally, we move on to Armin. Armin didn't need to lose body fat. She was also a mom to, with two little ones, a mom and a singer. And um, so with Armin, we didn't really look at her calories or anything like that. We really focused on strength, so on your form and on the quality of the movement, movements. She also didn't do 10x in the gym. She did 10x at home. Because of the kids, she needed to have a home version. So this was a three-month period. And you can see here clearly that the definition in the legs and the arms and the, the, even the abdomen, so we just increased her muscle mass not by much, by 0.3, and her strength went from 3.3 to 5.5. So how beautiful is that? She really even improved her posture, and she was really happy with the results. That was a three-month period. So you see how every client is so different, and we take their numbers, and we look at their data, and we decide what is the way forward for you, 
And um, every, every client is going to be unique. They have different lifestyles, they have different goals, they have different needs, and they can also tolerate different things. So everybody is individual and everybody has different strengths and weaknesses that they need to work on. So I really hope that this talk was helpful and that the information you got today can help you in many ways. Thank you so much for having me.